Fish. Yeah. Nice. Nice. See what we got here. Oh, he's off. Dang it. That sucks. on the jump bit. No. Oh, God. Lost that one too. Holy shit. Broke the line. Oh. Okay. That was unexpected. That's two fish lost. One broke off. Never... I only had that happen once before, but it looks like it got looped up into the the snap on the dodger and popped. I think that's the toughest thing about flatlining on big kokanee is there's nothing that leverage that hook in it other than the rod. You actually need a little bit stiffer rod. So I like these composites because they can kind of do all. But you know, with a downrigger or with a dropper weight, they hit and there's all that weight. It helps drive that hook home, you know. But I use 10 pound leader, so it's, I'm really shocked that leader broke. So I'm actually trolling towards these Bonaparte skulls and fallow ropes out here um, because they all feed on plankton, just like kokanee. So maybe, maybe there's kokanee underneath them. The Bonaparte skulls are the little white guys, and then the teeny tiny little birds are actually shorebirds called fallow ropes. They swim in circles create many vortices underneath themselves which sucks the plankton up towards the surface and uh, then they can feed so it's kind of cool neat little feeding strategy they're just little teeny tiny guys just little teeny tiny guys these are redneck fallow ropes they spend most of their life at sea and then they come to land and breed and the female has a harem of males and the males are dull and the females are bright colored. Kind of cool. Ooh, there's fish. Nice. On the turn. Feels good. Ooh. Taking drag. So today I'm at Corrine Prairie, which is in central Oregon. It's not very well known for. It's kokanee. It's better known for its big trout. It grows big trout. Uh, the surface is just absolutely coated in uh, exoskeletons from midges and stuff that have been emerging over the last few days. Uh, so it's a very productive lake, very shallow, like the deepest parts, 15, 16 feet. But it does have kokanee. They are few and far between. Uh, so it's not a numbers fishery, but they do get fairly large in this lake. We'll see what we got here. Oops, I got a double going. No, oh, no. Had a double going. Let's see what we got here. If we got trout or kokanee. Not sure yet. I've already lost two this morning, so I'd like to get one in the net. Slow and steady here. Alright. Let's see what we got here. Looking like a good sized kokanee. Ooh. I'll do that, Tyler. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah, that's a beautiful kokanee. Hey, look at that fish, guys. That's a, that's a nice kokanee. That's a slap. Okay, I was on purple pink hoochie. Oh, I just barely had him hooked. Now on this lake, it's a limit of five trout and kokanee. Kokanee and trout are pooled in the same limit, so you can't take home five and five, just five only. And I am just flatlining about 100 feet behind the kayak. Oops. I can't tell. Yeah, fish on the turn. Sometimes hard to tell in that turn. And they, uh... Ooh! You look a decent one. Got some, got some, uh... 
some gumption to him. A beautiful kokanee. Get him on the boat. Come on, buddy, turn your nose. There we go. That's a big one. That's a big one, guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's 17, 18 at least. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at the size of that thing. That is amazing. Look at that fish, guys. That's a dandy. <laughs> I'm starting to rally here. Quite happy to get two already. But you never know how long these bites will last, if it's a morning thing or not. The water temp's 52, so it's surprisingly warm. Now, as with all the other kokanee fishing that I do, especially early season, when they're on top like this, you're not gonna mark them on the fish finder. So. Kokanee are a schooling fish. In the spring, they sometimes won't be as tight. They have these loose associations. But if you find a fish, start circling on these areas. Um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm dropping a, a mark every time on my fish finder I get a fish. And I'm just going to start systematically working that area. Since there's no other indication, this is just a giant bull, 14 to 15 feet deep out here. There's nothing for, to tell me where these kokanee are. They are not surface feeding. So it's all just finding fish and then working those areas where you find them. What happens if, if I get in on a school like this, what I'll do is I will, you know, start making passes and a couple tight loops. And if I don't pick any more up, I'll start expanding that into a spiral until I really feel like I've lost the school. Then I'll just go ahead and move on to somewhere new. But even if you just get like a, a bump or a bite, you know, go back on that. That's a that's still a, a data point, a known, right? Oh, that was a bite. Oh, damn it. I need a spot on it. Darn it. Had a bite on the turn there. Didn't convert it. It's good to know they're still out here, though. They'll just follow and follow and follow like that, and then you make that turn, then they'll make some, uh, make some go for it. Still back. Oh no. He's gone. Dang it. That sucks. Definitely one of my lowest average days I've had in a long time. It's frustrating. But they're still out here, so that's the positive side. That's the positive. Yeah, I got a steak and drag. Usually when they're doing that, they're done for. Well, seems like the bite window is over. That's a bummer. I only I went two for six. Hopefully another bite window will kick on here. Oh, look. There's fish. About an hour since I had a bite, so this one's taking some drag. Switched out to a Wonder Bread Dodger on there and a pink coochie. Okay, come on. Ugh. Happy boy. Happy boy. Beautiful fish. Come on. They're hard to get their nose turned at you. Oh, there we go. That's a chunker. That's a fat boy. That's the big one of the day. Yeah. That's what I need. I need a little pick me up. That's a gorgeous fish, guys. Yeah. Look at that one. That's a fatty. 
Yeah, it's funny. I'm catching these all right where I marked all those fallow ropes and walls, and they're still kind of hanging out right here, all the fallow ropes and Bonaparte skulls. It's where the food is, is where the coconut is. Where the coconut is, is where the birds are. Some Bonaparte skulls all flying around right in here. And I saw a coconut come up right in the middle of them. So they're feeding on the same food source. That's what I suspected. Probably chironomids. But I can see a ton of little zooplankton here, like the size of pinheads, right here near the surface. They could be eating that too. Well, I definitely missed my opportunity to uh, capitalize on a limit, I think, this morning. Um, I was a little bummed about that, to be honest. Frustrated. Normally, I don't lose so many fish. But, I guess the, the scenery helps make up a little bit for that. It's absolutely beautiful up here right now. A stunning day. It started out very cold. It was uh, in the upper 20s. But now it's warmed up nicely. But the bite has definitely died. Oh, well, it's been two and a half hours, not even a tap. There's an indication that I'm probably not going to get anything. I'm going to troll the last mile and a half, two miles back to the boat ramp and uh, call it a day. I really wanted to come out to wiki up, but you know, after last year's drought, um, and that reservoir itself is just uh, overtaxed in terms of uh, water allocations. There's just too many, too many hands in the cookie jar. Uh, I thought I'd come up and show you Crane Prairie because I've always heard about it, that there are decent sized kokanee in here and definitely confirmed that today. So that's pretty cool. I'd love to pick up one or two more to finish my limit on the troll back to the boat launch, but uh, I've got a feeling that's very, very unlikely. There was definitely a roughly hour, hour and 15 minute bite window this morning, and I picked up one fish outside of that window, and that's been it. Oh, fish, yep. Nice. Stay on there. That was a long time between fish. That was th two and a half hours. Whew, feels like a big one. Give me this fish. Please don't let me lose it, please. Wow, this feels heavy. So it's definitely a kokanee the way it's jumping around back there. Whew, this thing's heavy. I don't know if he's just twisted because he went crazy jumping back there or not. Still haven't seen it. Feel that. That's a big kokanee. Holy smokes. A chunker. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is fit. Wow. Wow. Can't get over the size of these fish, guys. It's blowing my mind. That's fish number four for the day. This thing is so thick. That's what happens. You get four and then they make you stay out till like midnight to get your fifth one. No, I'll be quite quite happy with these fish that I got so far. <laughs> Look at the size of these fish. Awesome. That is a fat coat. Their head looks so tiny because their body's so fat. Incredible. I was just on the plain silver moon jelly. Peak performance light. And uh, pink purple micro hoochie. So I just the plain micro hoochies. They're just such a confidence lure for me. And I, I've been running spinners and flutter bugs and doing all kinds of stuff today. And all the fish have come on just pink or pink purple micro hoochies. That's it. 
You know, I think when there's a lot of prey base in the lake, like in this lake, I think a smaller presentation sometimes is where it's at. Cause they're, these fish are clearly not like wanting for food. All right, so there's my four big fish. I lost four fish, which is kind of a bummer. But um, Moon Jelly, Wonder Bread were the best light peak performance dodgers with just pink purple, pink micro hoochies. Seemed to be where it was at. Biggest fish is a 18 and a half. Smallest is just under 17. So pretty nice quality fish. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me and this bonus episode of Kokanee Across America. Uh, it turns out Crane Prairie has some pretty solid kokanee, so there's still big kokanee to be found in Central Oregon. Uh, so big shout out to all my sponsors and supporters of this journey across the United States in search of great kokanee fisheries. That includes Old Town Canoe and Kayak, uh, Paulina Peak Tackle, Hummingbird, Cannon Downriggers, and Ram Mounts. Um, also, I've had several of you ask if there's ways that you can support this project, and there's a very simple way. Um, on the bottom of this video, you'll see a little button that says thanks. You can actually just do a one-time donation on any one of my videos if you feel like they've helped you out, and you can help me out. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.